Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ, all of you. Please invite your friends. And our topic today is very important, uh, for sure, for those who care for you know what happened uh, around the world. So this is kind of politics, uh, economy, and security, a mixed topic. Uh, for sure, religion is involved at the end of the day. Uh, we made a video, if you remember, just a few days ago, maybe 10 days ago, maybe, uh, about uh, uh, the sanctions which uh, Trump, he did make on Iran. And those sanctions is extremely, extremely uh, harmful to the regime of Iran. Now, for me, if you ask me, uh, I feel sorry, really, for the suffering of uh, the Iranian people, uh, because at the end of the day, the sanctions will hit badly the people first, oh. which mean, uh, yes, the target is the regime, but the most people who will get the the penalty is the poor one. And this is what happened always around the world. Uh, the rich ones, they are rich, they can survive, they have their saving, they have money, and their fridge always will be full with food, and they have no problem. But the regime of Iran don't care really for their poor. Actually, they are, you know, uh, they 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 made them they made them suffer. Iran is a rich country, having a lot of oil. But yet, uh, there is a documentary. I don't know how many of you watch it. Made in the BBC by an Iranian lady who went to Iran, and she made like she recorded secretly. A documentary about women selling themselves for prostitution, people selling their kidney to live. Uh, but yet Iran have a lot of money to give to Hamas, have a lot of money to give uh, to Hezbollah in Lebanon, uh, a lot of money to give to the regime in Syria. Uh, anyone you know who sponsor their agenda, which means the money of Iran is going out to all terrorist groups, which is sponsored by Iran, because Iran. Uh, wanted to be as a Shia a powerful uh, empire and trying to be competing with all other terrorist groups which is led by the Sunni and even the Muslim Brotherhood which is a Sunni is under the command of Iran which is very strange but maybe many of you do not know that the first center for the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt was paid for by the mullahs of Iran which mean by the Shia of Iran. Now, what's happening now that we have a few hours left before we are going to be in May 3rd. In May 3rd, nobody can buy oil no more from Iran, which means zero, total zero. And when we say total zero, uh, you know, buying or selling, that's mean Iran almost, the income of Iran is gone. Uh, those countries, all Middle Eastern countries, you know, they are, they make money from one, from one, like the major income for them is just oil. Oil, gas, like Qatar, Emirat, Bahrain, the majority of the income is coming from the oil. So when you close the faucet of the oil, for sure, the, the oil is open inside, indoor, but is, if nobody is buying, so this oil is useless. Uh, they can do nothing about it. And Trump, by making such a sanctions, which is extremely smart of him, he did not go in war, he did not fight, he did not shoot, he did not even shoot a bullet. But look how smart this man is. In this case, by the way, I don't agree with Trump with many things. But in this case, without shooting a bullet, without going out to a war, he was able to force everybody in the world. And this is here, you, here you notice the difference between super country and a major country. Like, nobody really can force people to stop buying from somebody unless it is so powerful to the point you will face a consequence which you cannot handle, and that is America. So Trump, he understands very, very good how powerful his country is. And how much power he have in his hand so when he say I'm going to put sanctions everybody have to obey starting from China going through everybody else if the Russia uh, if, uh, if the Chinese the biggest country you know in the world 
uh, uh, most powerful for sure after after USA and maybe after Russia too. Uh, even Russia, uh, Trump, he have sanctions on them. So Trump, he understand how powerful he is as a country a leader, and he use his power not like like none before him. He's a businessman. He he knew how to do things in the right way. So uh, uh, what will happen now if we go to the uh, you know few like few weeks ago? Uh, the head of the Islamic regime in Iran, he threatened to close, uh, to shut down Hormuz. Let's see the news. All right, uh, I'm looking for the news where he, he, you know, he promised to shut down uh, Hormoz. Uh, Hormoz is uh, like, uh, let us say, it's about uh, 50 mile wide total in the sea, in the Persian Sea. Uh, but it is you know, not all of it is good for ships to go through. So here you see, like in the news, you will see that Iran warns that they are going to shut, and this is the the head of the the what they call them uh, uh, the Revolution Guards, the Islamic Revolution Guards. They threaten they are going to close close uh, uh, Hormuz. Uh, the territory, which means all oil supply coming from Kuwait, from Bahrain, from uh, uh, most of uh, the oil from Emirat, uh, even from Iraq, including for sure Iran. But anyway, Iran, nobody is going to buy anyway because of the sanctions. So the target is if they can shut down Hormuz, that's mean, you know, almost maybe 40 to 50 percent of the supply of oil of the whole world is going to shut down. Uh, now, this will not affect USA. Mm, USA is number one producer of oil in the world now. But if such a thing happened, uh, that would affect the whole world. Now, can Iran do that? I don't think so. Because then not only Iran is going to face America, Iran is going to face everybody in this earth, India, China, because they need that, uh, that location to be open. Uh, let me open the Middle East map so we can see together. We explained before how this is work. All right, let us uh, show in the map here. So now in few hours we will see if the threat of Iran was real or it was a potato threat, which means eh, talk, talk is cheap. Doing is different story. So this is Hormuz, and let us make a line here so people will understand what, where we are talking about. Uh, <clears throat> let us zoom more. So here you see in the map, In the top here, you see Kuwait. This is the Persian Gulf, and there is exit for Iraq. There is a port for Iraq to import to to export their oil, which is very important port. And then here Kuwait, and then here Iran, and then here we have Bahrain, and then we have Qatar, and this is United Arab Emirates, and then here we have Oman, and uh, for sure Saudi Arabia is here. But Saudi Arabia, they don't really need this port because still they can supply their oil from the Red Sea. However, the Red Sea have a problem. Here in this area, you notice that the sea is very uh, shrink, again, the same as in Hormuz. So in this area, the territory of Taz, 
The Saudi and the Emirati, they did their best to control this area here. So the Houthi, the Shia, who they are there, they will not be able to close it today. It's very small territory, I mean, it's a small distance, and it's very easy to shoot any ship try to go through by even an RPG. So, like, it's not like uh, uh, you do not need to be high tech uh, to close uh, uh, to close this uh, this area. And then the oil supply of uh, uh, from Saudi Arabia will be shut down totally. So, uh, if Iran is going to go and close Hormuz, they will not do only close Hormuz. They will close Hormuz and they will close this area here in the Red Sea. Which means this is will shut uh, down, as we said, uh, about 50 to 60% of the oil supply for the whole world. And that for sure, that would be a disaster for everybody. Uh, India, China, uh, and we will show you the chart about how those countries, they, how much uh, oil they buy from Iran specifically. But can Iran do that? I don't think so, because as I said, that will be open the gate of hills on your in, uh, hell, uh, hell in Iran, and Iran will not be able to close it. Maybe maybe it's going to close it for a day or two, but then things will be cleaned out, and the regime of Iran will be cleaned out. You see the 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 problem with those Islamic regime, and always all kind of Islamic uh, 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 like terrorist mentalities. If you have a gun, you think you can scare the whole world just by having a gun. If you have like a Kalashnikov. You know, which is made in Russia. Uh, the second he holds a gun in his hand, he thinks he is the most powerful person in this earth, and his weapon is extremely powerful. And then he started threatening everybody. Think everybody is just a, you know, it's an easy shot. Like, I mean, I have a gun. So, Iran shouting every day since the, the Islamic Republic of Iran established death to America, death to Israel. And then they start shouting, and death to Saudi Arabia. And then they start shouting death to Emirat. And then they start shouting death to the Sunni in Yemen. And then they got involved in many wars at the same time. And they have to spend money in all those wars. By doing this, Iran has no friends. Uh, they have Erdogan, you know, Erdogan here. Let us go, go up a little bit. Turkey have some borders with Iran, and I believe the Turkish, as always, they will smuggle the oil of Iran. They will do that because Erdogan is like a rat, you know, the rat who always take opportunity of the cheese. So Erdogan always, he live from left over. Uh, when ISIS took over in the oil supply in Syria here, Erdogan, he was number one protectors for, for ISIS, and he was buying all, uh, all the oil they have. He buy the barrel of oil almost for five dollars when the price is fifty fifty five. So this is not only like one one hundred percent. Like it's a great a great great opportunity to Erdogan to make a lot of money from the oil of Syria and Iraq, which is controlled by ISIS. Now Erdogan, he have no control of those. That's it. ISIS is gone. The one who controlled the oil is not uh, his his uh, his uh, force, and he need to find a solution. Uh, by Trump making uh, the sanctions, so now uh, 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 Erdogan, I believe, as usual, he will take a golden opportunity. He will consider this as a great opportunity for him to take advantage of I Iran because now Iran will need him to smuggle the oil through the, uh, the Turkish border borders. Uh, and I don't know if Trump he will be uh, uh, strong enough to spank uh, Erdogan for doing that. And I'm sure he would do that. This is for sure, absolutely sure. I'm very sure that he would do that. I'm not sure if uh, Trump, he will be strong with Iran, smuggling the oil of uh, uh, Iran abroad. However, it doesn't matter how much they smuggle, they will not be able to smuggle much. Uh, maybe 100,000 barrel a day, maybe. But that will not make a big difference for Iran. That is nothing, actually. So the option of smuggling oil to Iran will not help much. They can smuggle some oil to Azerbaijan, but that will not make much, because those countries here, who they are in the uh, in in, the, uh, in this sea area, they don't need the oil of Iran anyway. So who is going to buy the Russian, the Azerbaijan? Nobody will buy it. 
So then Iran have a big problem. They want to smuggle their oil to who? Uh, to uh, Afghanistan? Eh, keep trying. Uh, to Pakistan? That even will be worse. So the situation will be horrible and things is going to get worse. So Iran have one of two choices. Either they go crazy and they shut down Hormuz, as we said here. And by the way, Iran always try to take over uh, this uh, territory. If you look here, uh, if you look at those three islands, let me let me highlight them. There's a small three islands here. Those islands occupied by Iran. Those islands used to belong to Emirat. Uh, and the purpose of occupying them is to control this tiny territory of water. Uh, because you see, uh, the, the, the total side where a ship can go through is not even like maybe uh, 15 mile total maybe like if this is let us say 15 50 mile still the ship they can use only like this part you know this part of the water is good for ship to go through because remember those are a very huge ship and the deep, the the water here is not really too much deep it's just 60 meter and 60 meter for those ship is very it's almost nothing it's like you know those are very heavy uh, heavy duty ships so uh, in the coming few hours, Iran have to make a decision. What is next? For how long Iran can hold their stomach from food? How long the regime of regime of Iran Iran can uh, how they can pay salaries for their army? Who's going to pay for the cost of the living in inside the country? Maybe Iran now have some money. You know to survive for a month two six months but for how long so iran and the regime of iran understand very well that their options is very limited and now it is time for the moment of the truth either they have to bow down to trump and they have to drop down their threat and their uh, support to terrorism and they agree with the 12 conditions Trump he put on them or they go in war and then they will go with war in ev with everybody including even China because by by closing this area here you you are just going in war with everybody nobody will agree that you can close this area nobody starting from the Chinese and the Indian uh, and that and, and the European and uh, you know everybody I mean this is a, this is not a game to play so in a few hours we will see what will happen however look what happened before the sanction uh, like go final uh, about 15 days ago Iran was flooded by the most severe flood in their history It cover a huge part of Iran, a flood they never saw before. It's like the flood of Noah, if we can say. So things is not working for their benefit and look like they are being punished. So the sanctions of Trump, the flood of the water, the drown of their money through many wars, mistakes, stupid mistakes, all of this will lead to a bankruptcy to the point when they have the flood the Iranian government could not do anything to their to, to the to the citizen nothing they could not do anything uh, millions of people they are out of homes but still they could not do anything because they don't have money uh, so if you think about what's happening things is going really fast they are going down very fast now, uh, the Saudi and the Emirati and Bahrain and etc., they are waiting for what Iran will do. What Iran is going to do really is going to attack uh, Saudi Arabia. Because you see what happened when you have a fight with somebody is big, you don't hit the one is big, 
you hit the one who is smaller than you. And this is what they do in the Middle East. Like, you know, you fight with me, let's say you are uh, seven foot tall. Okay, I cannot fight with you. You are, you know, uh, I am uh, four foot tall. So I don't beat you. I go and beat your little tiny brother, you know, when you're away. So Iran, Iran, uh, she might try to make or seek revenge from the Saudi because uh, 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 Trump, he forced the Saudi to announce that all the oil supply, which is going to be short, uh, uh, whatever countries are short off because of the sanctions in Iran, the Saudi and Emirat, they promised to increase their oil supply, which means obviously they are partners with Trump in his plan on sanctions on Iran. So, uh, 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 it is possible that Iran will not go in war with the, with, the, with the USA because they will never dare to do so. That will be the stu biggest stupid mistake. You know, remember, here, USA have a huge base of American army in Qatar. And this is one of the irony things about, about Islamic countries. In Al Jazeera TV, they sponsor Al-Qaeda, they sponsor Mujahideen, they speak against the Kuffar, they speak against the... the I mean, they, they hate them all. But then at the same time, Qatar is the biggest base for USA army, if not in the Middle East only, in the whole world. And all the bases is paid by the Prince of Qatar, which means their electricity, their water, everything is paid by the Prince. Imagine, I'm for free. Just come here. Because this idiot, this, uh, this, uh, this coward, he cannot protect himself. And he want to play. So he use American as protection. And he will play between their shoes. So he, you know, he threat, uh, uh, he, he, he shout, he curse. He can curse anyone. And because the Americans are here, ah, nobody will attack me, right? So Qatar now is a friend of Iran. You believe it or not? Qatar is a friend of Iran. But Qatar have the biggest base of the American army in the Middle East. Trump just less than 24 hours ago, he announced that he is going to list the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist organization. As a terrorist organization. Let us search for the news. Let me show it to you. Hold on. Give me a second. Because we have to connect the dots uh, together in order to understand what's happening. And all of this does not happen for like for no reason. Always they are connected. Here you notice that Trump pushes uh, to, to, to consider the Muslim Brotherhood organization as a terrorist group. Now, why now? Muslim Brotherhood are funded, including Hamas. Hamas is an arm Muslim Brotherhood Brigade. It's not a different party. We may, maybe many people do not know. Muslim Brotherhood are really a terrorist group. Uh, and uh, Obama, he sponsored them. <clears throat> and actually, he hired one of the Muslim Brotherhood, a female woman, in the, in the White House to be a consultant. And he built, <clears throat> he built a, a, a little tiny mosque for her in the White House where she can pray. Imagine. Uh, so Trump now is pushing to make the Muslim Brotherhood considered to be terrorist. And I don't believe this is will happen. Me, myself, I don't believe really Trump, he will do that. Uh, because if he consider the Muslim Brotherhood terrorist, then what he will do with Qatar. And Qatar, the prince of Qatar himself, is a Muslim Brotherhood. Turkey, Erdogan, his party is a Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, there is many, I mean, so... Uh, either you have a friendship with them or they will become an enemy. So how you can announce the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist groups and Erdogan keep coming backward forward to you? How you want to do that? That will make, make you a hypocrite and make you stupid. Uh, because you cannot say Muslim Brotherhood are terrorist, but Erdogan is not. He is a Muslim Brotherhood. You see, Muslim Brotherhood is a party have a jelly, uh, a jelly shape. Uh, they, they have many names, many organizations. 
So in, in Turkey, they have a name for a party. In Tunisia, they have different name. In, in Syria, they have different name. But all of them, they are one organization. So announcing the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist group, which is the biggest Islamic organization, very well organized, and they are like snakes. As a terrorist group, that will make things very complicated. But I believe the reason Trump is doing that now, he announced it, and I believe there's many in the Congress uh, and uh, in the Senate in USA, they will oppose this. Why? Because many of them are sponsored by, uh, by the Muslim Brotherhood. You know, maybe many of you do not know how powerful those those groups are. Uh, I am very sure that inside the Democrat and the Republican, there is people who they are sponsoring the Muslim Brotherhood and they will defend them and they will not allow such a thing to happen. However, I believe that will not happen. Let us see if Trump really he would do it. But I say he will not. I hope I'm wrong, by the way. I want them to be listed as a, as a, as a terrorist group. But I believe there is many they will oppose it because Qatar will pay. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, Turkey will use their, 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 uh, their pressure on many corrupt leaders in USA. And corrupt leaders are exist everywhere. And USA is no different. There is, there is garbage everywhere. So I believe this is a threat. And he is making a threat saying to Qatar, and those who sponsor Iran. You have to choose between one or two. Either I list for you the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist group, and that will put sanctions on you too, or you deliver Iran to us. You be caught Iran, you forget about Iran, you stop sponsoring Hamas, you stop sending money to Hamas and Hezbollah and etc. And Qatar, everybody knows, that they send even money for every uh, person who uh, explodes himself between the Jews. Imagine you go and you kill the Jews. Uh, Qatar, he send your family a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollars as a gift. So, I mean, how in the world? Actually, Trump himself uh, last year he went in the White House, if you remember, and he says uh, 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 Qatar should stop s supporting terrorism. Okay, and what happened after that? Less than a week after, Trump, he sold more than 35 airplanes to Qatar. How a week ago, you said Qatar is a sponsor in terrorism. A week after, Qatar became our friend and we sell them weapon. So what Trump, he does, he play games. You know, he don't, uh, uh, he put the pressure on them and then he buy them, which means he, he, he forced them to, 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 to give something, something heavily uh, valuable. So what is heavily valuable Qatar can give and Erdogan can give in order not to put the Muslim Brotherhood in the sanctions and make it as a terrorist group? Obviously, they have to leave Israel alone, stop sponsoring terrorist groups like Hamas and Hezbollah, and stop sponsoring Iran. If those conditions happen, Trump, he will not put Muslim Brotherhood in the sanctions as terrorists, as we see here in the news. If they refuse, then Trump, he might try to move forward. But even if he tried to move forward, still I believe that will be very hard. But because, I, as I said, there's many corrupt leaders in the in the Senate and in the uh, in the Congress in USA uh, who they will fight this heavily. Uh, Muslim Brotherhood, they have branches everywhere. I mean, they have, they have really, and they have a lot of money too. Uh, Qatar alone is, you know, Qatar, uh, just last week, they, they bought 49% uh, 40 of uh, Al Italia airline. Uh, they are buying airlines of all countries, and they are buying companies, and they are buying land, and they are buying stadiums, and they are, you know, if you go to Europe, you will see Qatar owning a lot. You know, uh, go to London, go to uh, go to Paris, go to uh, wh where you want to go. They are buying everything. And because they have too much money, they don't know what to do with it. Money is coming from the ground. It's gas. Small, tiny country. The population is like 200,000 people. And they have trillions of dollars every year. So what they will do with it? Uh, people in Qatar, they don't need to work. You know, uh, every citizen in Qatar, he got a salary uh, between seven to 8,000 euros a month. 
uh, people in Qatar they don't pay for electricity it's for free a small tiny population a lot of money and this money is used because of the Prince of Qatar he put the father he put his his father he put him in jail and then he decided obviously he was convinced by the movement of the Muslim Brotherhood to be part of it and he became the faucet the money faucet they have a lot of it so Qatar is a big role in what's happening if Trump is smart he should do his best to get rid of the Prince of Qatar and replace him with a regime which is against the Muslim Brotherhood because any terrorist organization without money they are not exist you see even Al-Qaeda even Hezbollah all of them you know still those members in this terrorist groups they have to get salary they have to get paid somebody have to feed their families you know and they usually their salary is big like ISIS they were seducing people to come from Europe from America because we will pay you five six seven thousand dollars a month and the top of that we will give you uh, uh, shares from the booty we attack the neighbors we take their money and we will sell the oil and we will give you shares so a lot of money involved when you stop the money you dry terrorism terrorism and money they are always work together Hezbollah have another source of income which is uh, drugs the drugs is a big 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 income to Hezbollah but that's not alone enough for Hezbollah to survive maybe they can survive the sanctions for some time but they cannot do any major activities without the money of Iran same will happen to Al Houthi uh, maybe many of you do not know what is Al Houthi so let us take uh, take a peek in the news I will find you something about them I don't know how many of you you know you like the topic we are talking about but that will give you some educations about you know what's happening in the Middle East Al Houthi. All right. Let us see what the last news in the last, uh, let us say, one week of Al Houthi. You see here when you say Al Houthi right away you speak about the Gulf of uh, uh, Eden security because Al Houthi as I said they will try their best to close the borders let us click at the images and see what is Al Houthi is Houthi are Shia militant and they are the same as Hezbollah just different name they they, they, they name themselves Ansarullah Ansarullah if you go in the Quran you will see a verse the name of Hezbollah and the name of Ansarullah is coming from the Quran so this is uh, uh, a religious uh, uh, militant chapter 5 verse number 56 it says فَإِنَّ حِزْبُ اللَّهُ هُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ those who they are the members of Hezbollah they are the victorious so Hezbollah chose this name to be their name all right uh, for sure here translation the word Hezbollah does not appear uh, let us see the front translation maybe we can find but anyway uh, uh, their 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 names is a uh, uh, religious names and they are Shia they are Shia militant and there is other Shia militant inside uh, Gaza which is a jihad a jihad al-islami those are Shia too so here it says the party the party of Allah that is Hezbollah in Arabic when you see the word party of Allah that is Hezbollah all right uh, in different verse in the Quran We will see the same name, you know. <clears throat> about Ansarullah. So the Ansar of Allah, they are the one. 
Ansarullah. You see? So both of them, they have names uh, coming from their Quran, and both of them, they are Shia. And both of them, they scream when they shoot, uh, death to America, death to Israel. Both of them, they claim that they don't hate the Christians, uh, but they, uh, they want to kill every Jew. And uh, for sure, when you say death to America, they mean by America the Christians. You know, this is their mentality. Uh, you will see here in the news, if we go back, that Al Houthi, they are threatening, this is six days ago, ago they are going to shut down uh, uh, the Eden Gulf. And this is what we mentioned to you here, just if you remember in this area, that possibly Iran will order their militant in Yemen to shut down this territory here where the oil supply of Saudi Arabia coming through this area. And not only the oil supply actually of Saudi Arabia, there's oil coming from Sudan, south of Sudan. If we go here, let us see how many countries they supply gas. Egypt, they have they have their own, like they, they can still uh, they will not be fearing too much problem if if uh, the Red Sea is closed because still they have access to the Mediterranean Sea. But a country like Sudan and uh, and the oil come from the from the from the south of Sudan goes to this area, and then the oil of Saudi Arabia go from Jeddah, and then all of it will go through this little tiny axis the Gulf of Eden. So the Houthi, they will try to close this area in order to make a pressure on USA to open this area or to lift the sanctions on Iran. So it's very possible that they will try, but are they going to be succeed? Um, I'm not sure. Because I believe that USA and Saudi and all uh, uh, all all forces there they are going to be very village vigilant trying their best uh, not to allow such a thing to happen because uh, all what they need to do if they explode two or three ships same as here actually uh, this uh, this access is closed you do not need to shoot it shoot there forever uh, it's very narrow and it's very shallow and all what you need is just to destroy a few ships in this area and you close it so we will see in the coming 24 hours actually less than 24 hours what will happen uh, you can leave your comment and see you know you can share what you think about what will happen next uh, but whatever is going to happen this is a big victory to Trump as a smart man and he was able to do things American they were not able to do for a long time. And here you notice the difference between a, a president who know how to use the, the power he have in his hand and the one who is a potato like George Bush. Uh, Obama, Obama, he made the, the Iranian rich. Actually, let me show you this chart. Let me show you this chart. Hold on. Uh, Look at this. This is a chart showing the economy of Iran. The economy of Iran. Look what happened when the when the uh, uh, Trump, uh, sorry, when the Obama, who I believe strongly, he himself is a member of a Muslim Brotherhood. He left the ban from Iran. Look what happened to the economy of Iran. George Bush, he did some work against Iran. So during his period, the economy went down, flipped down. Then Obama came and things became skyrocketing. And the Iranian, they were able to generate a lot of money. Look at the chart. I mean, the, the difference is a huge, right? Then the sanctions of Trump came and the chart is upside down. Iran is going to go bankrupt because of this uh, uh, what and the, and now the sanction actually is did not start yet by the way he started more than six months ago 
but there was eight countries or ten countries are allowed still to buy from Iran. The sanctions will start tomorrow, the real sanctions. What happened before, it was a sanction in most of the countries of the world, but there is major buyers, <coughs> Trump, he gave them a chance to, to, uh, to buy in order to prepare themselves like to find different market like China and uh, Japan and uh, South Korea and Greece and Italy etc so now look what happened the economy of Iran is collapsing and m maybe they can survive for a year but after I don't think a year I mean this will be uh, incredible uh, uh, look at this US sanctions look at this do you see how how, where was the economy? Look at where it was. The economy was really high, and then suddenly the economy is so down. All right. <clears throat> uh, do you have evidence that Obama was a member of Muslim? Everything he did, he hired a Muslim Brotherhood in his uh, cabinet. <laughs> Everybody know her. Go and check it out. Uh, when he sent Hillary Clinton to uh, to Libya, they met only with one person in Libya. He is the head of the Muslim Brotherhood. <laughs> when when uh, the president of Egypt, the one, the Muslim Brotherhood president, he was thrown out by the revolution people, by by the strike of people. The first one who stood and he threatened Egypt. By sanctions was Obama. In less than two hours, Obama, he went in the White House and he threatened Egypt to have sanctions on them. And he even stopped giving money to them. So everything Obama did is against Israel. How, how much uh, uh, problems Obama he caused to Israel? Obama, just three months before he left the office, two months actually, he signed uh, the biggest, uh, uh, let us say, assistant to Israel. Well, but this is just because he wants Hillary Clinton to win. He tried to buy the Jews. Okay, forget about everything I did to you. I was bad. I was ugly. I was stupid, etc. I will give you a big portion of money. I will sign the biggest assistant to Israel in the history of Israel in order to make the Jews vote for Hillary Clinton. Because Clinton is the same mafia of uh, Obama. Clinton, she go every few. She used to go every few weeks to the Middle East. What, what do you have to do in the Middle East? Well, who? She have a family there. Visit, you know, wedding parties, uh, dinner party. Uh, Billy Clinton. Billy Clinton. He makes speeches in the Middle East more than he makes speeches in 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 his own town. Uh, the same as the other one with his name. This uh, the the redhead guy. I forgot Jimmy Carter. This idiot, Jimmy Carter. He worked for them. Jimmy Carter, he worked for the for for the for the for the Gulf countries. Uh, their organization are built by the money of the Arab specifically. Uh, how many uh, you know when WikiLeak came? WikiLeak came. How much money was coming to Hillary Clinton from from uh, Muslim leaders and why? You tell me why. I mean why why they are donating to her? I mean what for? You see, why? And then the uh, the king of Morocco he sent her I think twenty five million dollars. Why the king of Morocco he will send her donation? Go and feed your people. Your people are poor. So if you asking me to prove that Obama is a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, you know you you that's mean you are you know you don't want to see what's happening. Everything he did was against Israel. The first country he visited after he became president, it was Egypt. And the first speech about he made, he started praising Muhammad and quoting the Quran. <laughs> and uh, the video is still live on air. You know, I mean, it's in, in YouTube. You can go and check it out. All right. Yeah, all of them, they are from one kind, you know, and you will see the, the, the Democrat, by the way, they hate Israel. Look. There's a there's a there's a Muslim congresswoman. She uh, she made many comments against the Jews, you know, and what the Repub the Democrat did, did nothing. They are the one who made her a congresswoman. She cannot be a congress by herself. They put her in the party. They recognize her and they support her. And she won she won the election by their support. 
And then the first thing they start doing as two females, they are, became a congresswoman, they start insulting Israel, insulting the Jews. New York Times, just a few days ago, they published a, a character a drawing of a Trump, he holding a carrot, and the Israeli, supposedly the Jews, they are wearing a hat, they are a dog. This is New, New York Times. So, obviously, the liberals, they are going so far with their hate against Israel. I mean, how, you see, imagine, imagine if, if a Trump, he make, he posts that picture, and instead of making the Jews like this, the, the Muslims, they would eat him alive. Racist, KKK, etc., you know, so they are very, very corrupt. And uh, 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 Bernie Sanders, just a, a few days ago, he says uh, the government of Israel is racist. Is it? Racist, why racist? I am an Arab, and I say to you, uh, uh, all the Arab in the Middle East, they wish to have a government like Israel. They wish, they dream. An Arab who live in Israel, he have equal rights, he have same salary, he have the same health insurance, even he vote, and even he have, there is many of them, they are Arab, and they are Muslims, and they are in the, in the parliament. So what do you mean racist? Even in the Supreme Court of Israel, there is Arab. Right? Kitabu Bada'i wa Zuhur. This is a different topic, truth. Maybe you can ask me later about this thing. So, uh, uh, Obama, he did the biggest help for the biggest sponsor for the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas, which is Iran. And then Iran translated that money, which is given to them by, by Obama, to, to, to expand in their arms like octopus. So now they are controlling Yemen. They are, they, even they have camps in the Congo, training camps for militants in South Africa. The uh, uh, Hezbollah, now the vice president of Maduro, this, this, uh, uh, this communist in Venezuela, he is Hezbollah, you believe it? Let me, let me search, hold on. Uh, I think most of you are outdated. You are not really uh, uh, doing a good job researching. Who is the vice president? Maduro. Let us see. Uh, <clears throat> all right. I'm looking to see. Maybe we need to search for Venezuela, not without putting the name of this guy. Okay, hold on. Uh, Venezuela. I hate it when you type and then you find yourself you are typing in Arabic. <laughs> All right. Here we go. This is the vice president of Maduro. His name is Tariq Al Aysami. Do you see him in the left? He is a Hezbollah member. <laughs> so maybe some of you think that we are talking about a small, tiny, uh, influence of Iran, they are expanding everywhere, building Islamic center, recruiting, trying to convert from South America as many as they can to Shiaism, and then later they will organize them to be terrorists. 
And here we go. They are not just, uh, they are friends of Maduro. They have a vice president who is a Hezbollah member. What do you want more? And actually, they were planning, they were planning to replace Maduro with Hezbollah president. But look like their plan is not going through. Right? So if you think that's, uh, uh, you know, if you think like Iran is just a, a, a limited country, uh, their fingers is only in Lebanon and etc. No, their fingers is everywhere. In Canada, you know, uh, in USA, guys are stations in USA, you know, uh, just a few years ago, uh, two years ago, Canada, they closed a very famous bank. And they discover that it's owned by Hezbollah. A bank is functioning in Canada for the last almost 30 years. Owned by who? By Hezbollah. And in case you do not know, by the way, what's happening in South America, the, pri the previous uh, 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 president of Brazil, he's an, he's an Arab. <laughs> the president of Argentina, he was an Arab. Maybe many of you, you have no idea what's happening, right? The South America controlled by the Arab is, you know, the, the presidents are Arab. Uh, the difference is, like the, the president of Brazil, he's an Arab, but he is Lebanese, a Christian. Uh, 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 the other one for Argentina, Carlos Munaim. Uh, but I, what I'm trying to say to you, the Arab there, they have a huge influence and they have a big population, but majority of them, they are Christians mostly Lebanese or Syrian Christians. Uh, but there is some, since, uh, since the, uh, the, the previous uh, president of Venezuela, uh, Chavez, he opened the borders for uh, Iran. Like if you are uh, from uh, Iran or from Hezbollah, you do not need a visa. You just fly to Venezuela and, you, you know, they give you residency right away. Not a, not a tourist visa, residency. You can open a business, you can buy a house, you can do whatever you want. You're like a citizen. So as Chef is, Chef is, he opened the door for them and they flood Venezuela. And this is why we see that the vice president of Venezuela became a Hezbollah member. Uh, so look look what uh, Trump, he in his time, is. Uh, what, what's happening in Trump time? Maduro, and we, I pray really, I pray that ma this Maduro, he will go sooner or later. The Venezuelan, they don't deserve this. The whole country is bankrupt. Look, look at those uh, filthy uh, communists. The country is dying. I mean, if you respect yourself, just go yourself. What do you want? You cannot pay salaries. You cannot pay wages. People, they cannot even pay for the, the toilet papers. They cannot afford it. There's no electricity. There's no water. The stores are empty. What, why are you staying? I mean, do you want to more prove that you you uh, you fail? He will not. He, the, he they pre, they prefer that the whole nation die and they stay. The government have money to pay only for the 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 armed forces because the armed forces is the only one can take them off, and the poor people let them die. So armor armed forces, uh, uh, all the all the gold of uh, of uh, Venezuela is sold and the buyer is Qatar and Emirat. Go and search it. Go right now, search in Google. Emirat, Qatar, they suck all the gold of Venezuela. So now the guy, he is selling the gold, the reserve of the country for very cheap price in order to pay for his uh, temporary survival. What is left of the country? But they will not let go. So before Maduro was able to survive because Iran was supplying him with some money. Now Iran is out of money. Maduro will do what? Maybe he can borrow some money from China, some money from Russia. But those are not stupid. You borrow money and if they knew that you will not be able to pay for it tomorrow, they will not give it to you. So, uh, we will see what will happen in the coming 24 hours. We will see if Iran will do something foolish in this territory. 
and I'm expecting Iran to start uh, you know you know when uh, when you have a uh, like a cat you scream at her or little puppy and then he start you know putting his face in your shoe going around you you know like you know like just uh, let me go forgive me uh, give me candies you know this is what what the terrorist uh, regime of Iran and again we are not talking against the Iranian this is against the regime uh, you know by the way the Iranian they are wonderful people by the way for sure generally speaking and the biggest church of convert in USA are Iranian I don't know if you remember I told you once I saw a huge tens of thousands in the park I mean I never saw such a thing before uh, I was driving and I saw in the park big signs in uh, written in uh, Arabic letters but I could not understand but I know that Iranian they use Arabic letters to write so I stopped my car to see what's happening I said man this is all those are Muslims all of this so I stopped my car. I was coming to the park, park anyway. So I, you know, I went I went inside, and then uh, they have tables, uh, books. Um, you know, I mean, you name it. So I start walking by, and then in that in the tables they have Bibles, and people have chairs and standing on them like uh, speech corners. You know, so all of those are converted Christians. Tens of thousands, the biggest meeting ever I saw in my life for people who they are convert, ex-Muslims. So I asked one of them, I said, so uh, what, what, what is this? You know, like I see like, you have a Bible here, so what is that? Because everybody's speaking Iranian, so I asked him in English. So he said, we are ex-Muslims and this is a meeting, a conference for us, and we are meeting here in the park. Um, uh, and the people, they come here to preach, so we have the whole day preaching. Uh, feel free to join us, but uh, sadly, uh, you will not under understand because it is in Persian. We are talking in Persian, most of them. And he offered me actually the Bible in the Persian language. I said, that, sorry, just save it for yourself because I can't even read it anyway. I, I, don't, I speak Arabic, but not, uh, yeah. So, most of Iranian who come to USA, when they got their freedom, right away they became Christians. All right? So we are not speaking against Iranian people. We are speaking about against this regime, which is really a disgusting regime, a terrorist regime. Uh, imagine you go to school, you are a kid. In the morning, you have to shout, death to America, death to Israel. What kind of mentality is mentality? How do you teach a child? He don't even know what death is. So since you are very early ch ch child age, they start teaching you hate. And this is why really I find that what Trump he did is really uh, something very important. And I cannot wait really to see the regime of Iran kissing the, the, the shoes of Trump saying to him, forgive us, because they have no choice. What they will do now? What they will do? Nobody will buy their oil. Where the money will come from? Look, China was buying from them 600,000 barrel a day. This is the chart. Those are the eight uh, the countries which Trump he allowed them for the last six months to buy. Okay, so uh, he gave them a waiver, as you see here in the article. This is from the BBC. So he gave them a waiver, and the waiver is for those countries. China. He gave a waiver for China to buy a maximum of six hundred thousand barrel a day. Uh, then. Uh, from 600 became 360 and tomorrow is going to be zero India it used to buy five six or three thousand barrel a day then three thousand three hundred thousand and now tomorrow is going to be zero Japan Japan already shut down actually they're lying with them totally 149,000 South Korea uh, Taiwan uh, Turkey Greece and Italy eight countries he gave them a waiver and now those eight countries by tomorrow they will have zero sales with Iran or buying so where the money is going to come from you know what I mean where the, where the money will come from
The currency of Iran, the, infl the inflation of the currency is is a huge, the same as in Turkey. Turkey is, you know, is, is going bankrupt. I, I believe Turkey, you know, like if, if not Qatar, if you remember uh, the Qatar, they flood uh, Turkey with more than $40 billion uh, uh, promise. Uh, but they did not give the 40. They gave them, I think, 15 only. Turkey is bankrupt. The currency, the, there's no businesses, the war in Syria, the stupidity of Erdogan. He lost the election. The economy is so bad. The inflammation, the, the currency have no value. So Turkey is suffering the same. And yet this Erdogan, he think he can, you know, this is the funny thing about Erdogan. Erdogan, when he make a speech, he say, we will say to America, no. We are Turkish, we have our, you know, we are, we are a nation, great nation, and we make decisions for ourselves. And then when he sees Erdogan, he kisses his shoes. There is, there is something they say for in public, for marketing, for election, and there is something happened in reality. In reality, in front of a Trump, they are a puppet. In front of their people, they are, they are heroes. Yeah, I'm talking about Erdogan. Erdogan, when he meet Trump, he's like a puppet. When in front of the election, in front of his people, he say great stuff about about uh, about his uh, his power and Turkey is amazing and etc. You know, but in reality, you know. So look here, uh, the currency of Iran is losing the value. The price is the same as in Turkey. Turkey in the morning, the chicken is at like two million lira, and then after that, it's a, it's a, it's a, a six millions. It's come two hours after. Trump, he make one tweet, he make the currency lose 40% uh, of the value. Just one tweet. All right? When, when Saudi fill the void, no, nobody will fill the void anyway. Saudi, they cannot fill anything. You see, it's not about Saudi. This is about collapsing this regime. This regime, it's time for it to go. Either they have to agree to stop their terrorism activities, or they have to go. How Trump he do it? None of my business. The Saudi are not better than uh, than, uh, uh, but at least the Saudi they are not sponsoring uh, uh, like people who want to say death to America. If the American they knew somebody he is wanted for them, they call the Saudi. The Saudi they arrest him in twenty four hours and ship him in a box to USA, free shipping and handling. Iran is the opposite. Iran is a sanctuary country for all those who hate America. All right? Uh, let us see here. I, I like those charts because they give you a, a good information about what happened really. <coughs> who should win Indian election? Uh, you know, those countries like India, they have election, but I don't think it's a real election. Uh, people are not educated. People are naive. And the one who make a better speech and the one who control the media, spend some money, be in TV, he will win. They play with the mind of the poor people. Always in poor countries, with my respect to the Indian, uh, always the poor people, they are played. They play them. So... Uh, okay, what are you? Are you a religious Hindu? So now I will play Hindu with you. I am Hindu. Now I will become religious for you. So I will make speeches about me being a strong Hindu, etc., to make you vote for me. Then you vote for me. Second day I will sell you out. Where are they? Those, uh, you know, I mean, it's the same. You see, all those countries, leaders there, they are not leaders. You know, look at look at USA. USA is not even better. I mean, USA is supposed to be a democratic country. In the election day, all of them, they want to give us health insurance. Like when you hear Obama, he's speaking about giving health insurance to everybody. You think it's for free. And then he, he will go, Obama, he made health insurance. And then you find that you have to pay every month $500. Where am I going to get the $500 to pay for? What if you have like five kids? <laughs> so here we go. He promised us health insurance. But now he is he's making money for the insurance companies because now he made a law. If you don't go and buy a health insurance, you will, you, you, you will have a penalty. <laughs> so the naive American, they say, hey, we will have health insurance. Hey, everybody's happy. And it's not, it's not, you do not have health insurance. It was the same before. The, the, the only difference now, you have to do it. You have to buy it. It's like somebody saying to you, you have to buy it. Otherwise, I will shoot you. You know what I mean?
So always in those countries, uh, uh, as long as the people are naive, there is no election. America is the same. American are naive people. The one who controlled the media, he controlled the mind of everybody. Not the one who had the truth. You know? Look, uh, since uh, Trump, he won the election. They made him a traitor. He worked for the Russian. They made an investigation. Now, okay, the, 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 the whole uh, uh, propaganda did not work. So now what we will do? They want his tax. Okay, now what we will do? If What do we give you or his tax? They, they want his underwear. And they will sniff it to find if there is... Uh, uh, some sperm coming from Russia. I mean, they, they they are corrupt. They are not democratic. You know, when Trump, he won the election, they start burning cars, burning stores. I mean, this is America. This is supposedly America. This is not India. So, <clears throat> uh, there, is, there is a machine. There is a machine. Like, there is, a, there is rich people who they are driving these machines, like George Soros. George Soros controlled elections in USA in Canada, in Australia, in Europe, in France, in Germany. This guy, he tell countries what to do, what not to do. Same as in Iran, the money of Iran control many militant groups. They are the same as militant. So George Forrest, like, you know, the, the guy in Hungary, you know, he said, uh, uh, I'm not going to accept uh, refugee. George Soros, as if he's a president. He threat the country. I mean, have you ever heard of a businessman he can threat the country? Yes, he can, because he control Europe. He control Europe. And by the way, George Soros, somebody is putting a Jewish uh, 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 star. Jo George Soros, he is anti-Israel. So don't play the game of a Jew now. Don't blame the Jews. He is anti-Israel. Don't you notice? Don't you notice that Democrats, they are anti-Israel? And he is sponsoring them. I mean, what's wrong with you? So when we want, we make him a Jew. When we want, we make him anti-Jew. He have nothing to do with the Jews. Uh, so uh, uh, there is no election. If you think election would ever happen, and always in America, what happened? They bring us like uh, 10 donkeys in the stage. And then they choose, they say, choose for us one. Which donkey you like? But all of them are donkeys. The only thing happened during Trump, that he was not from the elected donkeys. <laughs> and that drive, drove them crazy. Yeah, look at those, uh, there will be election. I mean, who, who, who are they? Those? What, what is the qualification for Hillary Clinton to be a president? You tell me. What is the qualification, or, or, or even for Reagan, like Reagan is supposed to be a conservative Christian, supposed to, he's an actor. What is the qualification to be a president? Nothing. What is the qualification in this country to be a president? Nothing. Money. Money and the big companies sponsor you. They put you in TV and then a huge party support you. You know, the big, big money leaders, who the donator, they are the one who decide. And then you think you are making an election, but the fact they are already, they elect. They elect all of them. They say to you, this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy, choose one. The same as in Iran. The Iran, they have election too. The mullahs, they choose like five or six names to go for election. They choose them. And then they say to you, choose one who will be president. But it doesn't matter who of them when they are chosen by the mullahs. Do, do you understand me? There is nothing that's called electrical college. You see, the electrical college will be real. If you mute all TV stations, they cannot talk about election. And then people, they go to election. And then they choose the president. As long as somebody, he can be in TV 24 hours and there is somebody, nobody heard of him. How you can have election? Do they have even equal time for all the uh, the members of election? Like you go for one hour in TV, I go in one hour? To be fair, no. The one who have more money, he is going to be in TV more. And then they can, you know, in, in a free democracy, you can say all lies you want. Here we go, they are saying that Trump, he was traitor. I mean, this is a... <laughs> uh, 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 they should go to jail for this. I mean, how you can accuse somebody is not, he did not do such a thing, uh, uh, and you get away with it. But this is what they call democracy. You can fabricate all lies. Both both parties they fabricate lies against each other. There is no election in the world. They, they, no Indonesia, no India, no USA. There is no election. It's a game. It's a, just a game. And the poor people they are always driven by the media. The same when they make you buy a product, uh, you don't need it. You don't need it. 
For me, uh, uh, I was happy to see Trump winning because if uh, Hillary, she won, that means another eight years of Obama will continue and Muslim Brotherhood will take over the country. They are under the control of Muslim Brotherhood and nobody can question that. Everybody knows that. Uh, so this is why I, I, I was happy to see Trump winning. He is, he is a, he's a businessman, yes. He might be, by the way, involved in corruption. Why not? I mean, uh, he's a businessman. All businessmen, those who speak about billions, <coughs> they do corruption. You know, and I'm sure there's some corruption somehow, somewhere. Um, but that will not change the fact that he is 1,000 times better than the other corrupt and this guy, his pocket is full of money. So he's not like them seeking Clinton. He go to make a speech in Emirat for $60,000. You believe it? I mean, how low? You are a president who have a big salary. You have bodyguards. Your house, your health insurance, your retirement paid forever. Even if he die, his wife, she will get the same. Why you, why you do that to yourself? Why you go to make a speech in a wedding party? Why you go and make a speech in a circumcision party to get 60,000? And then they go to, to the Middle East and they speak about this Arab family. I am honored to be here and etc. And they, they, uh, they say the ex-president of USA is coming to make a speech. So they, they, they bring him just for a joke. You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, do you bet you want to bet I can bring Clinton? That's what they do. They have a lot of money. Check, you know, 60,000 for 60,000. They can bring an ex-president of USA to make a speech in a wedding party. How low they are. Clinton, Jimmy Carter, all of those garbage. They have no dignity. For the sake of 60,000 you go. Why? Are you hungry? Are you homeless? What do you want more? You know what I mean? At least this guy, he is too rich to seek 60,000 and to be humiliated for the 60,000. Maybe he spent it a day, right? Uh, but anyway, uh, and look what Trump he did, you know, right away when he came to the office, he changed everything. He flipped, he flipped uh, all the politics of USA. This guy, he is like a guy uh, getting uh, a sharp machine in the ground and he is digging the ground in the White House. He flipped everything, you know, everything they established before he is destroying it. And this is what making them go crazy. You know, there's somebody behind the Democrat making them try hard to, to impeach the man to get rid of him. Because if he stay for the other uh, uh, to, to continue until it's eight years, I mean, this guy he will destroy everything they have. Look what happened. The guy, he came in the presidency, and right away, in less than six months, the economy started going crazy. Jobs, economy, politics, everybody fear USA. <coughs> Excuse me. Obama was in the office for eight years. When we went on Obama, he went to Saudi Arabia. I don't know, I don't know if you remember. When he went to Saudi Arabia, two people waited for him in the airport. And none of them is the king of Saudi Arabia or even the crown prince. This is the president of USA, the most powerful country in the earth. Two people wait for him in the airport because they, he, you know, he, you see, you earn respect. When Trump, he went to you, Saudi Arabia, the whole country is waiting for him in the airport. The whole country was waiting for him in the airport. This is why a leader can change. Then leaders can destroy countries and they can build countries. Look at uh, Putin. Putin, he took over Russia. Russia was collapsing. Women, they are for sale. Women bride, the biggest business. Poor Russian. They are dying from hunger. There's no jobs. There's no money. Inflation. So they can't even pay for, the, for, for their heat. People are dying from cold. Putin came to office and look what Putin he did. Look what Russia was when Putin came to the office where Russia is collapsing and look at Russia today. Who can, who dare to play with Russia? 
They have billionaires more than they have any anyone in the in the world. The Russian billionaires are all over. Business, economy, power, weapon, everybody buying their weapon. Russia became the most scary country again, as if it's Soviet Union again. So from collapsing country to a powerful country, that is what leaders can do. Look at Venezuela. They got those communists. Venezuela was rich. And now it's bankrupt. And what I'm trying to say to you, leadership destroy countries or make countries. You bring an idiot, you put him in the office, he destroy the country. You bring a smart man, he make your country powerful. As simple as that. So, uh, 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 Trump, you know, by this movement he did, I think it was a very successful movement. And, uh, and I cannot wait really to see what Iran would do tomorrow. When that's it, no more oil, no money. What they will do? What do you think guys will happen? Anyone knows? Who can guess? What do you think will happen to Iran? No money, that's it. Trump, he shut down the faucet of oil on them. They cannot say it to anyone. They can talk as much they want, but who, how, you know, what they would do? WW3, World War Three? No, I don't think so. They, they, they don't dare. You see, those countries, they, they fart too much. They make too much gas. Do you remember Saddam Hussein? Who remembers Saddam Hussein? Saddam Hussein, he will teach America how to behave. He have two million soldiers. How many? Two million soldiers. Not 100,000. Two million. USA was inside Baghdad in less than 24 hours. I remember I was watching in Arabic the, the, the minister of media in, of Saddam Hussein. And he was speaking about the American, he called them the cows. The cows, they think they can come here, keep dreaming. Keep dreaming, the cows, we are going to surrender you and they are going to slaughter you. He was talking and the American tank was just in the other side of the square. The same place he appeared suddenly, the American tank behind him. <laughs> he was talking about the American uh, cows and the camera facing him and then the American uh, 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 tanks appear from the other side. And the, the Iraqi army scattered everywhere. So if Iran will, will dare to play with the, with the USA, I, I, I mean, you can guess what will happen. I mean, cheese kebab, hummus. Yeah, that will be the biggest mistake for, for Iran to do. They will never to dare, dare to do so. Uh, and not only that, as I said to you, if Iran tried to close this area, this area is sensitive to many countries, including China, India, uh, Europe. So all countries will go against Iran. It's not going to be only USA. So you see, this is what, this is what is smart about uh, Trump. Trump, nobody now can say Trump is waging war. All what Trump do did is something peaceful. I said, okay, if you buy from Iran, you don't do business with us. This is what the sanction is about. You, know, you understand me? The sanctions of Trump is very peaceful, very smart, because he's not going poor with anyone. If you do business with Iran, I will, we will not do business with us. So nobody can complain and say, oh, he has the right to do so. He is the president of his country. He has the right to, to buy from where, not to buy from where, to do business with who or not. So the sanctions are very simple, very smart. No war, no shooting. Nobody can claim, oh, this guy, he is, uh, is seeking war. He is not seeking war. So if Iran now make a war movement, that will be their fault, not the fault of Trump. Because Trump, he practices right as a president for his own country. Iran, they put the American army now, sanctions in the American army. Everybody is laughing, isn't it? You see, when, when, the, when President Trump, he put sanctions in the, in the Revolution Guards, which is the Islamic militant of, uh, uh, army of Iran, uh, uh, Iran respond by putting the American army, they put in, in the American army sanctions, okay, so sanctions, the, you, you, everybody is laughing. You putting sanctions on the, in, the, in the American army, everybody is laughing, right? So here you notice the power of a country, how powerful it is. And look, even China have to obey. We are talking about China. This is not, uh, uh, you know, little tiny country. 
even China, because China cannot risk their relationship with USA. Their biggest partner and business and partner is USA. So everybody have to obey and unless what is now now it is uh, nine actually sorry in Iran already sanctions is over because in the third I think this is the last day is not included which mean already the last day is is is, is, is gone because now in Iran uh, local time in Iran local time in Iran 6 and 28 a.m. That's it. No more oil coming out. All right. That's it. And if you think about it, this man, he did what nobody did of all those 30 years, 40 years of president in USA. All those potatoes, they could not do anything with Iran. Look at this guy. Look how smart he is. In this movement, look how smart he is. I mean, he very smart. Took him six months. Six month plan, and now let us see what will happen to Iran for how long? Maybe they have some money in their in their uh, safe, uh, but for how long? So I think what Iran would do, they cannot go in war. They can cause some trouble to the Saudi. Uh, they can cause some trouble here in this area, but I don't think they will be able to to be successful because uh, the Saudi already occupied that area and the Emirat in this territory here. So most likely, the Iranian regime will start playing cat with the Trump, and they will seek uh, uh, peace with Trump. They will ask him for forgiveness, and they will ask for negotiating uh, negotiation. Otherwise, the regime is over; it's going to collapse very soon. When people don't get their salary, when teachers they have no salary. When army officers don't have salary, what police have no salary. <clears throat> you see, all countries, when you can feed the people, still people, they can let you go stay in the office. But the second the people are hungry, nobody can stop them. Hunger is powerful. All right? Uh... <clears throat> Anyway, uh, so hunger, and I think this is what Trump he he is planning for. Uh, this is the war, the game of hunger. Iran is going to face a very bad days. Already, they are facing a very bad days. So let us see what will happen. And uh, I hope you guys you did enjoy your time here. As you know, I don't really keep my videos, especially about politics. How is your opinion about Indonesian president now? I don't know really much about him. I cannot talk much about Indonesia. It's going to be foolish of me to speak about something I do not know much. I know some information, but it's not enough to, to say. Lebanon is Islamic country. Is no, now. No, 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 it's not. But you see, Lebanon is because of the war. Uh, this is what happened. You bring a few Muslims to your country and then they bring many, 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 many more and then you lose control and then they became 50% of the population and then they ask for to be the, the, the they don't want the president to be a, a Christian. But they could not do that because the, the Lebanese Christians, they fought against them and still until now, Lebanon, the president is a Christian, the foreign minister is a Christian, the head of the army is a Christian, the head of the intelligent is a Christian. So let us say a major, major positions in the country is still under the Christian control. However, Hezbollah control uh, most of the south of Lebanon. If we zoom here in the in this area, this is here Israel. Let us make uh, some lines. This is the Israeli border. Okay, now this is uh, supposed to be uh, occupy, occupied by uh, by Israel. So here we have uh, Hezbollah. Let us make them in different color. 
This area is all Shia, and it, they are loyal to Hezbollah. And the reason Hezbollah was able to recruit a lot of people there, simply because Iran, during the war, you know, when there is war, people, they have no jobs, there's no money. Somebody have to pay. People, they, you know, they want to eat, they want to live. Iran start this, this, they open centers, they give salaries, if you join Hezbollah, uh, if you even get killed, we pay for, like, for a lifetime uh, salary, for your family retirement. So Hezbollah became a country inside the country. And Hezbollah control a big territory here. And in this territory, they grow drugs, cocaine, heroin, all kind of drugs. And the drugs they smuggle mostly, um, you know, to Europe through, uh, through Syria or the way through Turkey by the help of the Turkish. And then it goes to Europe or they can use the ports from the sea. All right. Hey guys, you are asking me about President of Indonesia. I told you I have no idea anything about him. I do not know him. How I can tell you about him? I, don't, I know nothing about Indonesia. The only thing I know about Indonesia that there's in Indonesia, there's a lot of Indonesian. <laughs> you know, you will be a fool if you speak about a topic you do not know. So I cannot say anything. All right. This is what I know about Indonesia. That there's a lot of Indonesian. I don't know if this is true, by the way, or not. <laughs> I know that Indonesian people are very nice people. And I really care for them. Uh, I know that as many of them, they are translating my videos and they support me. Uh, they are very loving people. I can, I can tell easy, you know, they are very, very nice people. But I don't know much about, because, you know, Indonesia, you see, in order to know about a country, you have to be, you have to be in the media. And uh, Indonesian are not, they don't speak English for me, so I can listen and see what's happening. So they didn't have like an English heavy, uh, I mean, I never heard of an English channel, Indonesian channel, so I can watch and see what politics talking about, what they are saying. Uh, always those who they are in the mainstream medias is the one you know about them, right? Can you also connect a uh, current event with public prophecy? Well, I, you know, I believe, you see, uh, Anyone, the Bible teach that anyone he promote evil, he will be punished. It doesn't matter who. Just to make it simple, we are not taking a side. All of us will remember when Israel took the wrong side against God. What happened to Israel? Destroyed. Is that correct? So this is goes for everybody. Anyone he promote evil, he will be hit by his own evil. It's like, you know, you dig a grave for somebody and you hope to bury him, but then you find yourself in that grave. So the Bible is making it so clear. There's tons of verses. Evil do, evil get. Iran was promoting practicing evil for the last 30 years. And they got nothing except their evil. Evil will come back to you. All those countries, they promote evil, evil come back to them. And look what happened as an example in Sudan. In Sudan, the president, he was sponsoring the Muslim Brotherhood. Just two weeks ago, he, right now he's in jail. Right now he's in jail. Sudan is a poor country, but yet there's a lot of money. I mean, money in the hand of the government, but poor people are poor. They found a safe in, in the size of a huge building and full of dollars and gold owned by the president, his brothers, his cousins. But in the screen, if you go on TV, you speak about we love Allah and we are going to practice. Islam is the only religion bring justice and etc. 30 years is leading, controlling the country, sucking the blood of people in the name of Allah. And now he is in jail like a rat. All right. So evil do, evil you will get. By your own people, your own people will judge you. And trust me, I believe strongly that when the Iranian regime collapse, the Iranian is going to punish the mullahs with no mercy. 
30 years of humiliation, discrimination. Imagine those who go and strike, if you remember a few years ago, anyone they arrest, arrest him in the street, striking against the government, they take him, even as a male, a man, they rape him in jail. They do that. So if you, you know, like, if you are thinking in the future to go against the government, you have to think twice. Not only you will go to jail, we will rape you inside the jail. This is how evil they are. All right. Uh, look at the evil Erdogan. Erdogan, he have tens of thousands right now in jail just because they oppose him. Postman, teachers, journalists. I mean, even the garbage guy, he is in jail because he support. Uh, uh, he accuses everybody, anyone who don't like him, he accuses him that he was uh, helping the, the queue against him. So, jail is full. TV. Uh, writers, I mean everybody, anyone he don't like him, he put in jail. Turkey is doomed. And actually, maybe this is sound weird. I believe that the best thing happened to Europe is Erdogan. Anyone knows why? Anyone I say that the best thing happened to Europe is Erdogan? It sounds strange, isn't it? <clears throat> Anyone knows why I say that? Why the best thing happened to Europe is Erdogan? Let us see. Why? No? You don't agree with me? Why? Why you think he is the best thing happened to Europe? Thank you. Here we go. President Believer. See? You see, this guy is smart. President Believer, he just said, uh, they won't let him to join uh, 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 European Union. Turkey was almost going to join. But since an Islamic party like Erdogan, and this guy, he keeps saying, and making poo, poo Now, there's many countries in Europe, they are opposing the join of Turkey into European Union so if not Erdogan Turkey will be now part of European Union and imagine if Turkey is part of European Union what will happen to European Union biggest mistake so he is not yet but he was going through he was going actually until now they are still negotiating about it you know but because of him all of this is no is, is, is in, in the freezer so, because of Erdogan, Europe until now is saved. <clears throat> Otherwise, the Turkish, they will flood Europe. Erdogan, actually, he went to Germany and he said, if we, if every one of us in Germany, he was talking to the Turkish, have six kids in the coming 20 years, we can take over Germany. He said that inside Germany. You go, go and search the news. So, this guy saying it clearly, we want to take over, over Europe. We could not take it by war. We want to take it by population. And the stupid European, you know, sorry to say, I don't know how many of you are European. I'm talking about government. They are officially stupid, like uh, uh, this uh, counselor in Germany. She is extremely stupid. She opened the door of Germany for anyone to come. And now they have millions of those who, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. So Erdogan, he said that clearly, I'm going, we want to take over Germany. We have two millions, two million Turkish. If every one of them have six and have six kids, uh, we would take over the country. <laughs> and he's not, you know, he's not, he's not, this is their plan. He's saying that clearly, you know, and those stupid Europeans still did not get it. So because of Erdogan, Europe until now is saved. So this is why I say, Sometimes things might, might look evil and bad, but it can save you. So the evil, uh, uh, the evil Erdogan saved Europe. Otherwise, the European they are foolish, and they were all they are going to open their doors to Turkey, and then they will be in big trouble with Turkey. All right. Uh, yeah, European now are changing. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of change happening in Europe. I hope they will be smarter. I see there's many, many parties are like every, there's a big change is happening. I hope so. And I hope it's before it's too late. But this is why I say Erdogan was a very 
very helpful to make European understand the nature of of uh, of, uh, of of their plan. Uh, because you know uh, Turkey was supposedly a secular country, and that was convincing European to let them get in. But the second Erdogan took over, things changed. And this guy is talking about, he's just two weeks ago, he said that he might take Hagia Sophia, correct? You remember? Just two weeks ago, Trump, he said, Israel have the right to take Julian. He made a speech in the election, says, I will give you, we will take the church of Hagia Sophia. What do you want more? How you can make a supper, such a person join your country or, 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 a, or, a, or a government? All right. Uh, so uh, European are lucky because of Erdogan took over. Otherwise, Turkey will be a member of the. And if Turkey became a member, that would mean make eighty million or ninety million automatically have access to European Union without visa. And you have fun then. And then by having Turkey join European Union. You have all the doors from Iran, Afghanistan, you name it, to come to Europe. Actually, already Erdogan is making billions of dollars, threatening Europe. If you don't give me money, I will open the borders for all the refugees. Right? It's a big business. What do you think about Congresswomen Omar? I think Congresswomen Omar is better than Congresswomen who they are not Muslims. I will tell you why. At least she is honest. At least she is honest. When she speak against Israel, she see she speak honesty. She is saying things she believe in, right? The others they are against Israel, but they don't say it. And I mean here the Democrat. So you see, Omar is is a is a is more honest than them. Yes, she is anti-Israel, but she is a Muslim. I mean, what you expect? You you elect a Muslim and you complain why a Muslim speak as a Muslim? That would be foolish, right? No, no, no. She is not a puppet. No, she is not a puppet. No, no, no. They are the puppet. They are the puppet. She is speaking her mind. They are the puppet who don't dare to say to her, shut up. They are the puppet, not her. She is taking advantage that because she is a Muslim, if you speak against her, Oh, they will say, okay, here we go. He's been uh, like a uh, Islamophobic, etc. Huh? They are covered. So she can say what she want and she can get away with it. But they don't dare to. You know, she is a member in their party. So she is better than them. Actually, her shoe is better than them. At least she is honest with her religion. She have more dignity than them. And I respect her more than them. Not I respect her not because she hates Israel. I respect her because she say what she she believe. The rest they don't say what they believe. Trust me, the the Democrat they hate Israel more than her, but they don't dare. Look at Bernie Sanders. Just Bernie Sanders, he said Israel is racist. Isn't it? did he say that? <clears throat> is Bernie Sanders is a Muslim? Actually, Bernie Sanders from a Jewish family. Everybody knows, but he is is he's a liberal. The liberals have no religion. All of them the same, same garbage. At least she is speaking her mind as a Muslim, right? Yeah. Why are uh, Trump invited Arab to join Europeans? How he, how he can join European? I don't understand. You see, in this uh, in, in this time today, we have a lack of uh, of honesty. Uh, liars are the one uh, you want. You, you, you want to be a successful lie. Don't speak your mind. And the freedom of speech is a joke. You know, here we go. I have to take my videos every few hours down because because uh, uh, Sharia law, YouTube, they they keep chasing me. If I say anything, you know, uh, Sharia uh, law, YouTube, take me my video down. But they say this is America. This is the freedom of speech. I cannot keep my videos on on on, on live for a few hours. <laughs> I live in America, huh? And they speak about democracy. I receive emails from YouTube, Pakistan, complain about your video, Afghanistan, complain about your video, 
United Arab Emirates complaint about your video. I mean, what, what's who I am? I mean, if you if you if you see the email I receive, it's like I am an organization. I'm just a guy making a video. Why in the world a country like Pakistan complain about Christian Prince? Who is a Christian Prince? Pakistan, a nuclear country, complaining about Christian Prince. Are we going to go to United Nations soon? All of them are the same. The liberals are the same. All of them they are the same. You post if you post the word stupid in, in, in Facebook, they, they, they give you a strike. You stupid. I can't say the word stupid. I mean, what's wrong with them? If you say the word is stupid, this is hate speech. So what I should say? <laughs> you know what I mean? So liberals, liberals are more dangerous than than the than the cult of Islam. The real danger is liberalism. They are hypocrites. Uh, 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 they are dangerous. They like to control you. They like to shut you down. They like to shut your mouth. Either you speak as they speak, or they will shut you down. The same is the same as Sharia law. Everybody have to eat the same food. Everybody have to say the same words. Everybody have to sing the same song. Everybody have to pray the same prayer. Everybody have to wear the same uniform. Everybody have to vote for one guy. His name is Muhammad. They are exactly the same. The difference is they don't believe in religion, you know, generally speaking, they are fake. Uh, Muslims, they have religion, but they are the same. It's like two, uh, like one coin have two faces. And this is why you notice that Islam and liberalism, they go together. I mean, you see, you see uh, 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 liberals are sponsoring Islam. I mean, how does it work? The Saudi Arabia just slaughtered, you know, uh, uh, 60 people just a week ago. Crucifixion and cutting hands and cutting feet. Women, they are jailed. Uh, people go to the embassy, they disappear. But they sponsor Islam. But how that work? How those who sponsor gays and lesbians, they sponsor those who kill gays and lesbians? Liberalism is, is, a, is a flag of hypocrisy. All right? Uh, and they in the you know and they uh, like when you receive messages from uh, from those uh, like uh, Twitter or Facebook or etc they say to you you did say in this message to a guy a stupid and this is against our guideline the guy is saying he want to kill me I can't say to him you are stupid <laughs> so you know there, there is a there is a I got a strike look at this I, I posted a, a comment a hadith where Muhammad uh, speaking about uh, shaitan is a black all right and and the angel is white supposedly so a Muslim he uh, answered me back he said have you ever heard of an angel he is black the Muslim says that I answered him back saying have you ever heard have you ever saw a shaitan, he is black. For saying that, I got strike from Facebook. I what what I did? <laughs> what I did? Nothing. <laughs> you know, liberals, the one who control who like you see, they control the media and they try to mute you and they think by doing that they cannot mute me i don't care you know you, you take account down uh, uh, shut down i will open you one and i will i will say what i want nobody can stop me keep trying do your best anyway uh i think we are done for today and I'm really, I'm really excited to see what will happen next uh, in the coming week, uh, because the coming week will decide a lot of things. We will see how Iran, and I'm, I'm expecting Iran will start uh, playing in love with the Trump. They will speak softly, and they will speak nicely.
and they will start trying their best to seek negotiation using their dog, the Prince of Qatar, the head of the Muslim Brotherhood in Qatar, this guy, Tamim. So he will, he is the one who will negotiate for the Iranian with the American, and specifically with Trump. Let us see what will happen. However, I'm really happy there's many good things happening today. And one of them is the end of a regime, a regime teaching hate, violence, terrorism, and was sponsored by Obama for many years. It's time for them to pay. Either they give up their terrorism or they have to face the consequence. I want to say thank you guys for being here. And this video will not stay, you know, because they will take it down anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? I will take it down myself better than they take it down for me. This is the whole point. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. And I hope that I was able to share some information with you. Something at least maybe useful. Uh, so you can learn more about the Middle East, which is a very complicated territory. I never saw complication exist as much in the Middle East. It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, like, you know, uh, like uh, a prince of Qatar is a Sunni. Iran is a Shia. Sunni and Shia, they are enemies. But then you will find that Muslim Brotherhood, they are sponsored by the Shia. I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, like imagine... I sponsor my enemies. Hmm, how is that? Because they don't have dignity. What they care for is the target. What this party can do for me, I will sponsor them. It's a it's a strategy of evil. You see, a person who have dignity, he will never compromise and partner with the enemy. But a person who have no dignity, he compromise and he partner even with the one he think he is the devil. For he himself, he is serving the devil. So thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And Ante will see you soon again, maybe tomorrow. Uh, Christ is Lord and Islam is false. And see you soon again. Bye-bye.